and sort of take a big breath and decide to call this bet. So we are playing a massive, massive pot. Hey YouTube. <laughs> G'day everyone, welcome back to the vlog. It's currently about 6 p.m. on a Monday evening and I'm getting ready to go back to yet another Melbourne home game. It's one we've been to a few times on the vlog. It's the one that very regularly does double board PLO bomb pots. So I'm sure it's gonna be a crazy action game. I've already eaten, I've already gym for the day. The only thing left to do is hop on over to the game. Let's go. <laughs> So I get to the game at about 7.30 p.m. and hop straight in. Everyone agrees to play 1-3-6. But anytime someone wins a hand on the button or there's a monotone flop, we're going to play a PLO double board bomb pot. And as you can probably imagine with those rules, the majority of hands we're going to go over today are PLO double board bomb pot hands. In fact, we've only got two no limit hold'em hands. So if you love PLO double board bomb pots, this is the vlog for you because we've got plenty of them to go over. Bought into the game for $500 initially. Let's see if we can run it up. First hand, I'm in the cutoff with Ace King off suit. I go ahead and raise it up to 15. Then I get a call from Mark on the button, Leon in the small blind, and Aaron in the straddle. So we go four different ways to a flop. Queen, nine, seven, rainbow. The action checks to me, and on this board, into three different people, not really trying to bluff, I go ahead and check, as does the button. So we get a free turn, which is the eight of hearts. The action checks to me again, still just trying to get showdown with my ace high. I check it to the button, then they go ahead and bet 20. Both the small blind and the straddle fold, and the action's on me, and I actually do think we have a bit of showdown value with Ace King here, having a bit of experience with the button. I know they're calling pretty wide pre-flop, and they're gonna have a lot of just random airball bluffs. Hands like Ace two off suit, King six suited, stuff like that all makes sense in my opinion, and I think when everyone checks twice, they're probably gonna use those pretty liberally as bluffs. So Ace King with their showdown value, I think it might be a good spot to call against this opponent type specifically, but wouldn't fault anyone for folding. I threw in the call, so we're heads up to a river, which is the three of hearts. I go ahead and check it over to the villain, then they go ahead and bet 35. And my logic for calling on the turn was that they could be using a super, super wide bluffing range, and I still think that might be true on this river, and considering they only bet like just over a third the size of the pot, we're getting a great price to bluff catch. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is the opponent might have some air ball bluffs, like ace two offsuit, but they also might be turning three four offsuit into a bluff to try and get me off of a weak pair or something like that. So there are some incidental bluffs that I still lose to, and when that is the case, I could look to just defend my range with stronger hands. I have a bunch of stuff like pocket eights, and those are going to make better defense for that reason. So I do decide to fold the ace high, whether that's a mistake or not, I don't know. So I fold my ace king, and then the opponent shows jack three offsuit. So I think they were bluffing with a hand that was actually stronger than my ace high. So super glad I made the fold in this instance, at least. So yet again, we've got the return of PLO double board bomb pots. Let's go with this insanely degenerate game. You can see there, I looked at King, King, Queen, six with one suit. I'm gonna pop both the flops on the screen and you can see we have an overpair on both boards, but not much else to go with our overpair. So when the action checks to me, probably a good spot to just check because I think the chances we're behind on one of the boards is like almost for sure. Like surely someone's at least flop two pair. So, but then like the chances we're behind on both boards, I think is a bit less likely. I mean, it is PLO, there's four cards. Anyone could have two pair on either board, but I still kind of like going ahead and betting my Kings for protection here, just to basically get anyone off of a two pair draw, which like everyone's gonna have for sure. So I go ahead and bet 60. Maybe this is a bit of an overplay. My hand is not very strong in a PLO double wall bomb pot. Regardless, I went ahead and made it 60 and only bet on the button calls. So it heads up to two different turns, which are the three clubs on the first board and the two of diamonds on the second board. I think my opponent definitely could have a few trips in their range. For example, the uh, three of hearts isn't on the first board and that's a hand that's a flusher on the second board so my opponent definitely could have hands like that so probably better to play this hand cautious and just check and try to get to showdown that's not what i did though i went ahead and potted it and wow i think this is a massive overplay at this point might effectively bluff my opponent off of if they have an ace in their hand you know they might not outdraw to us when we do pot it here, but I think pretty much we're just gonna be folding out worse and only getting called by better when we do take this line. So pretty colossal mistake. I 
maybe I'm on tilt and I was just trying to win the pot because it was already kind of big, but that's just completely noobish behavior. I'm pretty disappointed in myself in all honesty, but I went up ahead and bet 180 and then my opponent falls pretty quickly. So fortunately we do rake in this pot. I still feel like I definitely overplayed my pocket kings here. Next hand, yet another PLO double ball bomb pie. This time, I'm um, the first act with 10, 9, 8, 7 single suited. And I'll put both the boards out there so you can see we have our Rapture on the top board and then we have Top Pair on the second board. The action's on me first to act and I really think the best play here probably would be to check. And honestly, I think it's a good spot to check with my entire range. Even with a super strong hand like Top Set on either board, probably better off going for a check raise than we are leading out. Better off letting other people bet their hands for protection than mixing in a check raise. And we do have a pretty strong hand here. But it's not super strong, and if we do bet and then we face action, it's going to be a pretty gross spot for us. So I went ahead and potted it, which I do think is a mistake. Yet again, not crushing these PLO double bomb pots in my opinion, but I went ahead and potted it for 60. Michael calls in what would have been the big blind, and under the gun decides to re-pot -pot it for 300, and they only have 302 in their stack, so it's definitely an all-in from them. The action falls back around to me, and... Kind of an awkward spot. I definitely think the opponent's going to have a lot of sets in their range, which we are going to be behind on at least one board. Having said that, we do have really, really good equity with our wrap draw. And if my opponent does have, you know, pocket tens, we have like a zillion outs to beat them. Pocket aces specifically, we are a dog against. But even so, we have outs to improve to them with our wrap and so many two pair draws on the second boards. Really think it will be a mistake to fold out my equity here, even though I think we are likely behind. So I decide to repot it, just basically trying to get heads up with under the gun and getting the big blind to fold whatever equity they do have. So I go ahead and repot it and then the big blind folds pretty quickly. So we're heads up with the under the gun and they end up saying that they have pocket aces and they end up showing pocket aces with queen nine of spades. So this is actually one of the worst hands we can be against. Not only are we dog to a set and an over pair, but we have the wrap draw, but we're still trying to fade spades. So it's, it's, it's a pretty gross situation for us and really didn't want to get all in against this hand, but I think leading out sort of forced me to overplay my hand a bit. Definitely kicking myself for it, but get to see the runouts here. And on the first board, we do make our straight, which is pretty good news. Don't make two pair on the second board. But by the river, the front door flush gets in on the first board and we don't make two pair on the second board. So the opponent ends up scooping us on this one. Pretty sick and definitely did it to myself by overplaying this hand. Next hand is yet another PLO double board bomb pot. We're eight handed this time, so the pot's a bit bigger and there's even more ranges of hands we have to beat. So I'm in the hijack with A763 with two small diamonds. So I'm gonna put both the boards on the screen there and you can see we have two pair on the first board and only bottom pair with back door flush, a bad back door flush on the second board. So. Pretty hard whiff when the action checks to me. Definitely going to check it here. And the cutoff, Michael goes ahead and bets 50. The action folds around to Aaron in the big blind, who throws in the call. The action's on me, and I decide to call here. I mean, I think it's a fine play. We do have top pair on the first board, but the second block kind of blocks one of our outs to make a full house on the first board. And I think it's pretty likely the cutoff could have already have a straight on the first board. So yeah, drawing pretty thin here and maybe folding is a better play for that reason. But I did decide to throw in the call. We still, we go three ways to two different turns. Ace of hearts on the first board, giving us a better two pair. And nine of diamonds on the second board, giving us our bad flush draw. The action checks all the way through. So feeling a bit more confident that my two pair on the first board is maybe good. The first one's six of hearts, putting in backdoor hearts. Second one, the Queen of Spades and then the big blind goes ahead and pots it for 220. The action's on me here and pretty gross spot. It's somewhat possible that our two pair is good on the first board but the fact that the backdoor flush got in and it's PLO double board bomb pots. I actually think both opponents have a lot of flashes in their range and calling off for such a large bet Probably not the best play to only try and win half the pot, so I do end up folding. Cutoff ends up showing 6-4, which was a flop straight on the second board, and they end up folding that hand too. So the big blind's got a scoop, and I'm more happy this time that I didn't overvalue my hand and end up calling on the river, because I think it really would have cost me, but still trying to figure it out, because maybe even floating on the flop's a bit too loose. 
Next hand, we have a return to normalcy with two card PLO and just a regular 136 hand. So there's three limps ahead of me, then I'm on the button with Ace King of Clubs. I go ahead and ISO raise it to 40, then I get a call from the big blind and the low jack. So we go three ways to a flop of 10, 9, 7 with two clubs. Pretty good flop for us, we do flop nut flush draw, and then the big blind actually decides to lead for 60, and the action's on a loose aggressive low jack who raises it up to 200. So the action's on me here, and this is a pretty gross spot, in all honesty, I'm not really sure how to play it. Part of me wants to just three bet and commit stacks since we have so much equity with nut flush draw, but at the same time, like, if I do get it all in, like this many big blind. The big blind started with 300, but very deep with the low jack who actually covers me. And I started the hand with about 800 at this point. So yeah, it's a lot of money to commit. And if I get it in against a set then, or a straight, I'm in pretty bad shape with my nut flush draw. So part of me just wants to call for that reason and then reassess if we hit a turn or if the big blind three bet rips it. If I do that with my nut flush draws, I also have to do that with my sets on this board, which actually might be a fine play because, you know, the sets are dogs to straights, which I honestly think both the opponents could definitely have at least the 8-6 the suited combinations and maybe the jack-8 suited combinations as well. We are pretty deep, so maybe they will call with those as well. So yeah, I think, I think it might be just a good play to continue all of my range as a flat here. Hop in the comments, let me know if you disagree, but I decide to just call with a nut flush draw. I accidentally put in 250 because apparently I need new glasses and the opponent only bet 200, not 250. But I just call, then the action's back around to the big blind who led, and they just rip it all in for about 300. Then the action's back on the low jack, and they go ahead and rip it all in for 760. So, well, massive shove there, but with the nut flush draw, having so much equity to draw out, I think the chances I'm against at least one set is, or a straight is like very, very likely now, but we're getting so much equity to outdraw those hands that we really can't be folding the nut flush draw here. Also somewhat possible that either of the opponents could have a worse flush draw, which we're actually ahead of with ace high. Sort of take a big breath and decide to call this bet. So we are playing a massive, massive pot, and the low jack announces that they have queen jack of clubs, so that's great news, because we're ahead with ace high for what's a pretty large side pot. The big blind doesn't announce what they have, but it doesn't matter because it turns a six of clubs. And the low jack is now drawing dead to us, which is absolutely beautiful in this spot. And the river's the two of spades, which does pair the board. So a little bit of concern that we might lose the side pot to the big blind, but I end up showing my nut flush and they end up marking their hand. So we're gonna scoop this massive, massive pot with nut flush. Even though I do think I misplayed those bomb pots, my luck's definitely changed around this hand and we scoop in a massive pot here. Feels good. Before we get into yet another PLO double board bomb pot hand, I should mention that we created a rule very briefly throughout this session that when we play these PLO double board bomb pots, we should only have 500 effective playing out of anyone's stack. The rule was sort of scrapped after a bit. It, did, it was a bit silly in all honesty, but it definitely did affect the dynamics of this upcoming hand. Not to give too much away, let's get into it and you'll see what I mean. Right, when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. We've got yet another PLO double ball bomb pod. This time I'm on the button with ace queen eight nine with a single suit to the ace so i'm going to put both the boards up there we only have one pair in the back door and nut flush draw on the first board but on the second board we have top two pair and under the gun ryan goes ahead and bets 55 the action folds around to me and i think we should just call in this spot there might be some merit to protection raising our second pair maybe we can get it in against you know a hand that we're behind on the first ball, but we still have outs to draw against. But I really think I've been overplaying these PLO double ball bomb pots in the past, and this might be a good spot to just call and play my top two pair on the second board. A bit cautious. So that's what I do. I throw in the call. And small blind Michael calls, as does the big blind player. So we're still four ways to two different turns. The first one's a six of diamonds, giving us a nut flush draw. And the second one's the eight of clubs, giving us the three pair on the second board. Top three pair on the second board, but the most obvious draw does get in. Now the small blind checks and the big blind decides to lead 75. Under the gun calls the 75, the action's on me. And I think this is a good spot to call. And the only reason I prefer calling and not raising is just because the chances that the big blind has jack 10 or better. Like, I'm almost positive at this point. Like, why else would they be leading out? And I'm just going to get it in against a hand that I'm behind on the second board. Whereas if we call in position, we're getting great odds to draw to a nut flush draw on the first board, but also a full house on the second board to try and outdraw that jack tet. 
So I throw in the call and then the small blind folds. So we're still three ways to a river. The first river, it's the three of diamonds. Let's go, we make the nuts on the first board. The second board's a jack of clubs, so unfortunately we don't get there. But who needs to get there when you have the nuts on one board? The action actually checks to me here. And in this spot, I think we have a slam dunk option to go ahead and pot it here. And uh, honestly, I'm potting it as a buff, basically. I wanna fold my opponents off of either jack 10 or a flush on the second board because, I mean, we do have some showdown value with our two bear, but the, we're playing PLO, right? So the chances at least one of these two opponents has a weaker flush on the second board, like almost for certain. And if I pot it and I get them to fold out their equity, which is half of the pot, we're essentially bluffing them for over 250 bucks. So definitely gonna go for it here. I go ahead and bet the pot. And then after a little bit of tanking, the big blind does call. Damn, weren't hoping to see that. Then the action's on the under the gun player and they end up taking a while before folding their hand. So we show our nut flush and three pair and then the opponent shows jack seven, seven, five. So they do have a set on the second board, which is gonna beat us. So we do end up chopping the pot. They made a good call and we end up chopping this pot. I don't know if I still need to announce it at this point, but yep, we've got another PLO double board bomb pot. We're going crazy with these things this session. I'm first to act the small blind. Ace, queen, nine, six with a single suit to the ace. And I'm going to put both the boards out there. You can see we pretty much have a massive whiff on the first board, but we do have top two pair on the second board. The action's on me and I do what I think I should have done every other time. I was first acting a PLO double board bomb pot. I check it. Great spot to have a range check. The action checks through to Mick in the hijack who goes ahead and bets 20 button Aaron calls. I throw in the call here with my top two pair on the second board. Really don't want to go ahead and check raise this hand. I think there'll be a massive overplay when like everyone is like could very easily have an 8x hand in their range which they're never going to fold to a check raise. So I decide to throw in the call as does the big blind Michael and the low jack Ryan. So we're still five ways to two different turns. The first one's the ace of diamonds, giving us a bit of showdown value on that board. And the second one's the four of clubs. I go ahead and check the action again. And then everyone checks to Aaron on the button who goes ahead and bets 150. The action's on me now and pretty interesting spot. Very likely that the button could have an 8x hand or pocket aces, pocket jacks, but we actually beat those hands on the second board and even if they have a hand we lose to on the second board like pocket queens nine queen nine at least chop with that hand on the second board but we're ahead of it on the first board so i think it's a good spot to call because the chances we're behind on both boards are pretty pretty low at this point in all honesty we do get courted by some stuff i think it's a good spot to throw in the call and chances we're behind on both boards are super unlikely so i throw in the call and then everyone else folds, which is actually a really good result for me. We're still heads up to two different rivers. The first one's a jack of hearts pairing the jack, and the second one's a six of hearts. I go ahead and check it over to the villain, and then they go ahead and pot it again, and I hit the tank, and I'm trying to figure out what hands in my opponent's range do I have that I get scooped by. I look at the boards, and okay, I'll do lose to any jack or any eight on the first board, which my opponent can have loads of in their range. Uh, pocket aces as well, but all of those hands, we're actually ahead of on the second board, unless they have queen nine, which we were gonna get courted by, which kind of does suck, but we're ahead of everything else. So I kind of want to call because of that. We also do get scooped entirely by 10-8, which is a straight on the second board now, as well as trips on the first board. So we do lose to that specifically. Everything else we're either getting courted by or chopped by. So it's a pretty close spot in my opinion. In game, I was thinking I only get scooped by 10-8 and I'm gonna be chopping so often here, which is true that I didn't really factor in that occasionally I will be courted when I call the pot, pot here. So there definitely is some merit to folding and I really wouldn't fault anyone for folding, but I just thought for them to have 10-8 and to have potted it on the turn might be a bit of an overplay on their part. I mean, it's not really when they do have the draw, the front door draw on the second board as well, but it's like, what better hand are you gonna get called by on the first board when you pot it with 10-8? Maybe if they have like ace 10-8, X, like, okay, that makes a bit more sense. But I think that sort of, I can discount a few of their 10-8 combinations for that reason, which makes calling to chop much more appealing. So I end up throwing in the call and then the opponent shows ace-ace, nine-six. So phew, 
They don't have 10-9, and we're going to chop it. They do have a full house on the first board, but we beat their overpair on the second board with their two pairs. So very happy I put my foot down and threw in the call. Super curious to hear your opinion on this. Is there ever merit to folding on this river? Do we get corded enough or scooped enough for that to be worthwhile? Hop in the comments below and let me know. So those were the most interesting hands I played across the session. In terms of how I feel about my play this session, I'm going to go with a B grade. I do like most of the decisions I made in the PLO double ball bomb pots. I think I've used this excuse, if you will, every other time I've played at this game, we've done the PLO double ball bomb pots, but I'm very new to them and I'm still trying to figure it out. But I do think I've made significant improvements on the past few times I've played even though I did have that hand where I overplayed my wrap and top pair, which is a pretty significant mistake in all honesty. All the other hands I think I did all right. Maybe a few loose flop floats here and there, but with so many backdoor draws and stuff like that, it can make sense to do that in a PLO double board bomb pot. So pretty overall, pretty happy with my play in those hands. We only had two significant no limit hold in hands this session. I'm very happy with my line on the Ace King of Clubs. The, the Ace King offsuit hand, I do think there is a bit of a logical inconsistency when I call on the turn, assuming my opponent could be bluffing a lot. And then I fold on the river when they could still be bluffing a lot. I said the thing on the river that they could be bluffing with a pair, which I think is true then, but it's also true on the turn. You know, we do have a bit more equity on the turn because we can outdraw them by hitting an ace or a king. So yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it is a pretty close one. And even if I did make a mistake by folding the river, it's not a significant mistake. The biggest mistake definitely was overplaying my wrap draw and top pair in the PLO double bomb pot. But it's such a crazy degenerate game. Like, of course, I'm going to get stacked at one point in one of these hands. So I can't have too much of a sook about it. I do like when I called the river with my top two pair with the queen nine and floating with my nut flush draw and then potting it. I think was the correct play. Overall, pretty happy with my performance this session, but there's definitely still room for improvement. So it's going to land me on a B. In terms of results on the session, I bought into the game for 1,200 in total and ended up cashing out for 1,700. So pretty big win on the session. I'm definitely going to be happy taking away, but definitely still some room to improve in my performance if I want to repeat a big win like this next time I come back. Hey, so we're out here at 2.30am and the game's finally wrapped up. The game usually ends at around midnight, but plenty of people were happy to stay a bit later. I was definitely happy to stay a bit later. Play an extra long session, particularly when I was deep stacked towards the end of the session. Definitely had a good time and plenty of interesting hands. For now, I'm going to go home and I actually have to edit a vlog before tomorrow. So it's still going to be a pretty late night for me, but keen to get that in before I actually go get some rest. I'm out of here. Peace. Thank you.